Hello students. So, the question here today says a simple pendulum of length capital L having a bob of mass m is deflected from its rest position by an angle theta and then released as shown in the figure. The string hits a peg which is fixed at a distance x below the point of suspension and the bob starts going in a circle centered at the peg. Assuming that initially the bob was at a height less than the peg, show that the maximum height reached by the bob equals its initial height, that is the first part. Second part is if the pendulum is released with theta is equal to 90 degrees and x is L by 2, find the maximum height reached by the bob above its lowest position before the string becomes slack. And the third part is find the minimum value of x by L for which the bob goes in a complete circle about the peg when the pendulum is released from theta is equal to 90 degrees. So, let us do this question one by one taking one part at a time and let us understand what is really happening here. So, this is the figure shown here as you can see there is this peg here which will not allow the length of the string above it to move on the right side once the string reaches down here as the bob reaches in its vertical position. After that as this bob oscillates on the left side it is only this length of the string which will move towards left so that the bob now moves in a circle of radius L minus x is not it. So, in such a position in such a situation things will become slightly more involved, they will not be as the standard pendulum oscillating here in this case. So, if we talk about the first case where they ask us to find out or we, uh, we are supposed to show essentially that the maximum height reached by the bob equals its initial height. So, if we assume that let us say the initial position is position A which is let us say at a height h above the lowest position which we can call as the position B. So, we assume that this height is h and let us say the second in the second uh, on the second half on the right side when the bob reaches its highest point it is the position c which is at a height h dash above the point b. Do we see that there is no loss of energy as the bob moves from the point a to the point b and then to the point c. The only forces acting on the bob are tension and gravity out of which tension is not doing any work because tension at any point in time is acting perpendicular to the direction of motion of the bob right and mg being a conservative force will never dissipate the energy of this system. So, can we use the law of conservation of energy between directly the points A and C saying that at the point A since the bob started off from rest all it had was potential energy of mgh if we assume the potential energy at the point b to be 0 and this should be equal to the potential energy at the point c because at the point c also the bob is at instantaneous rest that is the right extreme of the bob. So, it should be equal to the potential energy at the point c which is mgh dash. So, simply we see here that h must be equal to h dash and that gives us the proof for the first part of the question. Now, for the second part they are saying the pendulum is released at an angle of 90 degrees with its vertical direction and the value of x is also now a special value it is L by 2 half the length of the string and we are supposed to find out the maximum height reached by the bob above its lowest position before the string becomes slack that means the string loses its tension. Now, for this see that this will be the figure that we will have to work with now this is the situation this the bob is started it's it starts from the position a where now the string makes an initial angle of 90 degrees with the vertical position so first thing is do we understand that we can easily find out the velocity of this bob when it reaches that bottommost position b and that velocity then becomes the initial velocity for the remaining motion of the bob which basically will now be centered at the point p so, the bob will now move in a circle of radius L by 2 is not it at any point in time it will be like this moving in a circle of radius L by 2. So, if we just find out the velocity at the point B using once again the law of conservation of energy between the points A and B 
and then we can check as to whether that velocity is sufficient for the bob to complete the vertical circle or not. If not, then we can check for the condition where the string loses its tension before it reaches the topmost point, right. So, the first step here would be to be able to find out the velocity as the bob reaches the point B. For that, we can directly use the law of conservation of energy between the topmost point. Once again, assuming that the potential energy here at the position B is 0, U is 0 at the position B, we understand that if we use the conservation of energy principle between points A and B, we can easily say that all the potential energy at A, which we can consider as M G L now, because the bob's height here above the ground level will be L, is not it? So, all this potential energy will get converted into the kinetic energy of the bob at the position B, which will be half m v squared, where v is the velocity at the point B. Yes. And if we just solve this, we get that the value of v comes out to be root of 2 g l, which is as expected. We know that when conservation of energy principle is valid, as a particle falls down and under the effect of gravity, when only gravity does work the relationship for the velocity gained by the particle is the same as that of a freely falling particle under the effect of gravity. So, root, D, uh, root 2 g l is what would otherwise also expect. Now, see that this root g l, if I try to write it in terms of the new radius of the circle in which the bob will move beyond the point c after the point not c b, I can write this as square root of 4 times g into l by 2. Why have we done this? See that since L by 2 is the new radius of the circular path, I can compare it with the minimum velocity v minimum required for a particle to move in a vertical circle. The minimum velocity required at the bottommost point is root 5 g r, where r is the radius of the circular path. Here that r is L by 2 in the case of this particle. So, do we see that this factor of 4 is less than 5, which basically means that this verb at the position B right now will not be able to complete the vertical circle and somewhere along its path somewhere let us say here it the tension in the string will become 0. Now, if I assume that this position is position C let us say I try to find out the position um, of the point C by assuming that let us say this angle this particular angle that the radial direction to C makes an angle with the vertical direction. We can consider two things here. One thing is in terms of theta, we can find out the height of this point C with respect to the bottommost point B that is right. This H, C that H can be written as the sum of L by 2 this length plus this particular length. If we drop a perpendicular from the point C onto the vertical line, this length see that it will be L by 2 cos theta. Yes. So, the value of H here comes out to be L by 2 plus L by 2 cos theta. Knowing this height to which the particle has reached, we can find out the speed of the particle here knowing the speed at the point B using the law of conservation of energy between the points B and C, the speed at C can easily be calculated. Right. So, the first step would be that let us find out that velocity. We use the conservation of energy principle between the points A not A it is between B and C between B and C. So, at the point B we have only kinetic energy which is half m into V squared where we know the V the V value is root of 2 g L. So, root of 2 g l whole square this is the kinetic energy at the point B potential energy here is 0. So, this should be equal to the potential energy at the point C which will be m g h and we can use this value of h here plus if we assume that let us say the velocity at the point C is half m is v c then we can write the kinetic energy as half m v c squared right. Now, let us keep it just like that for now. Let us now talk about the force equation also, because we are saying that it is the position C where the string loses its tension, it becomes slack. Do we see that at this particular position, 
the only force acting on the particle will be mg in the vertically downward direction and it is the component of this mg along the radial direction which will provide all the necessary centripetal force for the particle to move in a circular path with a speed v yes so we can use second equation that we get here will be the force equation at the point c along the radial direction and when we do that we will get the component of mg along the radial direction which is mg cos theta is equal to m into v squared by r which in this case is l by 2 this is the centripetal force is equal to mass into the centripetal acceleration right uh, so here what we can do is we can write it as 2 m v squared by l and see that we can substitute this value of velocities by the way at the position c so i can write this as v c and now what we can do is we can substitute the value of v c from here into this equation so that we are able to get the value of h first theta because we will be substituting the value of h in terms of theta we will solve for theta and from there we will get the value of h so how do we do this we will first see that from here m cancels out and v c squared can be written as uh, g l by 2 cos theta yes and now if we substitute this value up there in the first equation the conservation of energy this will give us m g uh, ok what we have here is half m the starting term into when we square the root 2 g l term we will get a 2 g l here so that the 2 cancels out so we are left with m g l this is equal to the next term is m g into we will substitute the value of h from here it is l by 2 into 1 plus cos theta plus now we substitute the value of v c squared from the lower equation so it will be half m into v c square directly can be write as m g l cos theta by 2 there is another factor of 2 down here in the denominator and now we can solve this equation easily because we are getting here m g l is equal to m g l by 2 plus m g l by 2 cos theta after opening up the bracket and the last term is m g l by 4 into cos theta yes solving this bringing this term the second term on the left side we will get a m g l by 2 is equal to this is 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 that is 3 by 4 times m g l cos theta and that makes us understand that the value of cos theta will come out to be 2 by 3 or theta will be cos inverse of 2 by 3 if we want to find out the value of theta as well but here what we are trying to find out is the h value so all we need to do is just substitute this value of cos theta above in the equation for h which gives us h is equal to l by 2 into 1 plus 2 by 3 which will be 5 by 6 l and this is our answer for the second part now if we go to the third part of the question which says find the minimum value of x by l for which the bob goes in a complete circle about the peg when the pendulum is released from theta is equal to 90 degrees understanding the situation here and using the standard result that we have for a particle to be able to complete a vertical circle yes do we understand that in this case if the peg is at a distance x below the top point and the remaining length here will be l minus x as the total length of the string is l as the bob reaches here we now know that it will have a velocity of v is equal to root 2 g l whereas the velocity required the velocity required for the bob to be able to complete the vertical circle we know we know is equal to root of 5 gr from our understanding of vertical circle and what is r in this case 
r in this case is if you look at it carefully it is nothing but l minus x yes the bob will now beyond this point the bob will move in a circle of radius l minus x so i put l minus x here instead of r and now what we can do is since we are trying to find out the minimum value of uh, x by l for this to happen we can just equate this value of v that we are getting for the bob to be equal to the required value yes so this implies root of 2 gl should be equal to root of 5 g into l minus x yes and this equation can now be easily solved for x by l value we can open up the square to get 2 g l is equal to 5 g into l minus x which gives us 5 l minus 2 l that is 3 l is equal to 5 x will come on this side and that gives us x by l is equal to 3 by 5 which is also equal to 0.6 which will be the final answer for the third part